you have of many papers, but the one that caught my eye is Smooth Analysis of Dynamic Networks, in which you write, a problem with the worst case perspective is that it often leads to extremely strong lower bounds. These strong results motivate a key question. Is this bound robust in the sense that it captures the fundamental difficulty introduced by dynamism? Or is the bound fragile in the sense that the poor performance it describes depends on an exact sequence of adversarial changes? Fragile lower bounds leave open the possibility of algorithms that might still perform well in practice. That's a, in, in the sense of the impossible and the bounds discussion presents the interesting question. I, I just like the idea of robust and fragile bounds, but uh, wh what do you make about this kind of tension between what's provably like what, the, what bounds you can prove that are like robust and something that's a bit more fragile. And, it, and also by way of answering that for this particular paper, uh, can you say what the hell are dynamic networks? Wait, what are distributed algorithms? You don't know this? Come on now. <laughs> and I have no idea. And what is smooth analysis? Yeah, well, okay, so so smooth analysis, it's, so it wasn't my idea. So Spielman and Tang in, uh, came up with this in the context of sequential algorithms. So just like uh, the normal world of an algorithm that runs on a computer. Uh, and they were they were looking at, there's a, a well-known algorithm called the simplex algorithm, but basically you're trying to whatever find a, a, a hole around a group of points. And there was an algorithm that worked really well in practice. But when you analyze it, you would say, you know, I can't guarantee it's going to work well in practice because if you have just the right inputs, this thing could run really long, mm -hmm. right? But in practice, it seemed to be really fast. So smooth analysis is they came in and they said, let's assume that a bad guy chooses the inputs. It could be anything like really bad ones. And all we're going to do, is, because in, in simplex, they're numbers. We're going to just randomly put a little bit of noise on each of the numbers. And they showed if you put a little bit of noise on the numbers, suddenly simplex algorithm goes really fast. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that explains this this lower bound, this this idea that it could sometimes run really long was a fragile bound because it could only run a really long time if you had exactly the worst pathological mm -hmm. input. So then my collaborators and I brought this over to the world of distributed algorithms. We brought them over the general lower bounds, right? So, so in the world of dynamic networks, uh, so a distributed algorithm is a bunch of algorithms on different machines talking to each other, mm -hmm. trying to solve a problem. And sometimes they're in a network. Uh, so you imagine them connected with network links. And a dynamic network, those can change, right? So I was talking to you, but now I can't talk to you anymore. Now I'm connected to a person over here. It's a really hard environment, mathematically speaking, and there's a lot of really strong lower bounds, which you could imagine if the network can change all the time and a bad guy's doing it, it's like hard to do things well. So there's an algorithm running on every single node in the network. Yeah. And then you're trying to say some, something of any kind that makes any kind of definitive sense about yeah. the performance of that algorithm. Yeah. So like a we're so I, I just submitted a new paper on this a couple of weeks ago, and we were looking at a very simple problem. There's there's uh, some messages in the network. We want everyone to get them. Mm -hmm. If the network doesn't change, you can do this pretty well. You can pipeline them. There's some algorithms that work, basic algorithms that work really well. If the network can change every round. There's these lower bounds that says uh, it takes a really long time. There's a way that like no matter what algorithm you come up with, there's a way the network can change in such a way that just really slows down your progress, basically, right? So smooth analysis there says, yeah, but that seems like a really, you'd have really bad luck if your network mm -hmm. was changing like exactly in the right way that you needed to screw your algorithm. So we said, what if we uh, randomly just add or remove a couple edges in every round? So the adversary is trying to choose the worst possible network. And we're just tweaking it a little bit. And in that case, this is a new paper. I mean, it's a blinded submission, so maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> it's not, whatever. Um, we basically showed- uh, uh, An anonymous friend of yours a, submitted a paper. Anonymous friend of, of mine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whose paper should be accepted. <laughs> showed that even just adding like one random edge per round, oh, you, uh, the sim and here's the cool thing about it, the simplest possible solution to this problem blows away that lower bound and does really well. So that's like a very fragile lower bound because we're wow. like, it's, it, it's almost impossible to actually keep things slow. I wonder how many lower bounds you can smash open with this kind of analysis and show that they're fragile. This is my interest, yeah. Because in, in distributed algorithms, there's a ton of really famous strong lower bounds, but things have to go wrong, really, really wrong uh, for these lower bound arguments to work. And so I like this approach. So this, this whole notion of fragile versus robust, I was like, well, let's go in and uh, just throw a little noise in there. And if it becomes solvable, then maybe that lower bound wasn't really something we should worry about. You know, that's gonna embarrass, that's really uncomfortable. That's really embarrassing to a lot of people 
Because okay, this is the OCD thing with the with the spaces. Is it feels really good when you can prove a nice bound, and uh, if you sh say that that bound is fragile, yeah, oh. that that's that's like there's gonna be a sad kid that walks. Uh, like with their lunchbox back home, like yeah, well, my uh, bond, my lower bond doesn't matter. <laughs> no, I don't think they care. It's all, in, I don't know. It feels like to me a lot of this theory is just math machismo. Yeah, it's like whatever. This was a hard bound to prove. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you what, what do you think about that? Like, uh, so if you show that something is fragile, that's more important. For, that's really important for in practice, right? Uh, so do you think kind of theoretical computer science is living in its own world, just like mathematics? Yeah. And their main effort which I think is very valuable, is to develop ideas. It's not necessarily interesting whether it's applicable in the real world. Yeah, we don't care about the applicability. Yeah, yeah. I think we kind of do, but not really. And we're terrible with computers and can't do anything useful with computers and we don't know how to code. And, and you know, we're not, we're not productive members of like technological society, but I do think things percolate. Exactly. You percolate from the, the world of theory into the world of algorithm design, which yeah. will pull on the theory and now suddenly it's useful. Uh, and then the algorithm design gets pulled into the world of practice where they say, well, actually, we can make this algorithm a lot better because in practice, really, these servers do X, Y, Z, and now we can make this super efficient. And so I do think, I mean, I, I tell my, I, I teach theory to the PhD students at Georgetown. I show them the sort of funnel of like, okay, we're over here doing theory, but it eventually, some of this stuff will percolate down and affect at the very end, you know, a phone. But it's a long, it's a long tunnel. But uh, the very question you're asking at the, the highest philosophical level is fascinating. Like if you take a system, a distributed system or a network and introduce a little bit of noise into it, like how many problems of that nature are fundamentally changed by that little introduction of noise? Yeah, because it's all, about, especially in distributed algorithms, the model is everything. Like yeah. the way we work is we're incredibly precise about here's exactly, it's mathematical. Here's exactly how the network works. And it's a state machine. Algorithms are state machines. There's rounds and schedulers. We're super precise. So we can prove lower bounds. But yeah, often those lower, those impossibility results really get at the hard edges of exactly how that model works. So we'll, we'll see if this, so we, we published a paper on this, that paper you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, that kind of introduced the idea to the distributed algorithms world. And I, I think that's got some traction and there's been some follow-up. So we've just submitted our, uh, our next, I mean, honestly, the issue with the next is that like the result fell out so easily. And this is just the mathematical machismo problem in these, in these fields is it, there's a good chance the paper won't be accepted because there wasn't enough, mathematical self-flagellation. So that's such a nice finding. So even so showing that very few, just very little bit of noise yeah. can have a dramatic, uh, make a dramatic statement about the fragility. It was a big surprise to us, but um, once we figured out how to show it, it's not too hard. <laughs> and these are these are venues that for theoretical, yeah. for theoretical work. Well, okay, so the, the fascinating tension there exists in other disciplines, like one of them is machine learning, uh, which, it, despite the the power of machine learning and deep learning and all like the impact of it in the real world, the main conferences on machine learning are still resistant to application papers. Yeah, I'm not uh, sort of, and application papers broadly defined, meaning like finding almost like you would like Darwin did by like. Uh, going around, collecting some information, saying, huh, isn't this interesting? Yeah. Uh, like those are some of the most popular blogs and yet as a paper, it's not really accepted.